Hi everyone, this is final part about skid steer assembly with my own hands, where I'll finish working on it and tell you all the pros and cons for the year of usage. I'll start with electric equipment. The most important part is generator. I found it at salvage yard. In order to turn on a particular device, we'd need a group of toggle switches. The engine hour sensor is needed for the oil replacing at specified time interval. We also need an immersion fuel gauge unit, low beams, which are useful in winter time when it gets dark early, and back lamps, so that the skid steer can be visible in the degraded visual environment. Here is the entire minimum set of electrical equipment for the mini loader. First of all I checked the generator's working capacity. Then try to rotate the generator with a drill, but there probably were not enough revolutions and the bulb didn't go out. I took the angle grinder and tried to employ it. The generator started working and the light bulb began to go out. This means the generator gives a charge to the battery. The perfect place for the generator is above the engine. The crankshaft, with a pulley put on, will spin it. I removed the engine from the skid steer for the ease of convenience. The pulley will be placed on the spacing tube. After the pulley was installed in its place, I welded the bracket of generator attachment. The design will be the same as in the car. Then I welded a bar for the generator belt stretch. Now we can check whether there are enough revolutions to give rise to the generator windings. The bulb went out, the revolutions are quite enough for a car generator. While the engine is removed, we can prepare our skid steer for painting. During the assembly, there poured generous amount of oil onto the mini loader's frame, so it needs to be well degreased before painting. The inside part of the frame and the engine compartment were painted with corrosion inhibitive black pigment. Before continuing painting the exterior, we should complete all the remaining jobs concerning the loader. A rear window was cut out in the cabin. It helps when you move in constrained conditions. I welded the front optics over the cabin and checked it in work. It shines very bright. Everything is perfectly viewed in dark conditions. I installed the angle bars on the cabin in order to close the seam. I also concealed the underside of the cabin under the seat. Then I went to the pins of the hydraulic cylinders. I welded plates to them that will protect them from turning. They don't need any grease nipples, since there are eye bearings in the clevis and there are grease nipples installed on them. I drilled an oil channel in the boom's pin and twisted the grease nipples in.
I also made a pin retainer on the hydraulic cylinder of the bucket and installed the grease nipples for the eye bearings. The tail lights slightly protrude beyond the body. I made a ledge of the steel strip for them. Now we can take off the cabin and start painting. Since it's a mini loader and it looks pretty like a toy, I decided to paint it in some bright variegated colors. I used three in one paint for rust. After the paint has dried, I continued assembling the skid steer. I prepared the glass, cut off the old tints with great difficulty. While the painting process there felt a lot of snow, so I decided to remove it without finishing the installation of electronic components. I put on the chains on the rear wheels and went outside. The soft snow got removed without any difficulty. I decided to check whether the loader could manage the compacted snow. The wheels slip easily even with chains. The sharpened bucket helped to deal with it. It took a while for the skid steer to start biting into the snow and remove that heavily packed one. After a brief stint I heard a crunch coming from the left side in the area of the hydraulic motor. It turned out that the motor attachment bolts became unscrewed from the vibration and load, and the chain began to strike on the teeth that caused the crunch. I tightened bolts of the hydraulic motor and continued my work. It's good that the skid steer has an excessive power and the wheel slip on any kind of surface, no matter if it's snow or asphalt. I'd also like to try the wheels with the grouser and check whether they could highly improve the characteristics of the mini loader, precisely crashing into the ice and pushing the soil. After dealing with the snow, and to be precise, when winter was over, I continued working on the mini loader. I prepared a gas tank under a dip sensor, as gasoline always ran out at the wrong time during works. Now it'll be clear how much gasoline is in the tank. This time I want to check the fuel level sensor. The sensor doesn't show the level smoothly. The arrow moves exactly along the tick marks. There turned out to be more wires than I expected. In order not to twist them, I put a terminal block. Then installed the toggle switches in their place and checked the voltmeter and the generator at the same time. I acquired another device that shows the fuel level, the temperature, and the oil pressure. My job is to monitor the oil temperature in the hydraulic tank. For this purpose we need to screw a temperature sensor in it. The monitor was installed also on the left. 
I welded a separate plate with an angle for the fuel level sensor and the motometer. It's rather convenient that the motometer also shows the engine speed. Now I want to tell you about the improvements and attachments that were made during the year of the skid steer operation. First I made the counterweights to the back of the loader. It's just a steel box filled with concrete. Each counterweight weighs 60 kilograms. They are removable and can be removed at any time. The first thing I did from the attachments was a fork. I welded a quick-release platform and fixed the fork on it with the bolts, which is made of a shape too. A very convenient thing in work. You can transport almost everything with its help. I also made a crane boom or so-called hook suspension. It's also attached to a quick-release platform with the bolts. The extension type variant wasn't even considered. It's just easier to add some extra shape tube that comes useful just a couple of times. The skid steer is able to raise up to 50 kilograms with working radius of 5 meters. The outweighed load can lead to losing touch of the rear wheels with the ground. I made a cradle cage for the lift arm, so it can lift a person to a height of about 3 meters. I just need to go into my home decorating, so I think it'll come in handy. And also that standard bucket that I made earlier. During the extended operation I didn't manage to heat the oil over 50 degrees. So for now I don't see any point in installing an oil radiator yet. All I can summarize after a year of operation is that the technique never failed. There were some problems with carburetor and air filter which I fixed eventually. Since I was making this skid steer exclusively for my own use, I find no sense to hide the disadvantages, which turned out to be not so many. As I said before, there were problems with the carburetor, typical for most Chinese four-stroke engines. As you're practically working into the skid steer on the spot, moving back and forth, constantly breathing the exhaust gases, especially in calm weather, there's need to adjust a pipe over the cabin or better yet to install an electric motor and forget about this problem at all. An issue of a loud exhaust will also be resolved. The loader nearly toppled over a couple of times until we set the counterweights. After their installation the problem was gone. I also noticed that the Chinese high-pressure pump is more productive. The left side revolves faster and the hydraulic cylinders better get filled with the oil. That's not critical, but it's better to take two identical pumps. That's all the drawbacks. Otherwise, there are many advantages. As all the hydraulics is new, there are no problems with it at all. The construction itself didn't get bent. 
the welding didn't get deteriorated. The chain from the hydraulic motors and high pressure pumps is alive and has no visible wear. The future plans are about to make more attached implements, a brush, a concrete mixer, a hydraulic drill and so on. We can also install an electric motor in it on a trial basis. This vehicle certainly has to be done much earlier, cause now this is my indispensable helper. And one of my dreams has finally come true. You should decide for yourself whether you need it or not. I'll just give you a piece of advice, if there is a chance, do it. Not necessarily this type of mini loader, but a simple articulated version and your back will thank you later. That's all I got for today. If you like the skid steer assembly guide, put your thumbs up and share this video. Hope this instruction might be useful to someone.